Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Everett. On behalf of the Sports Hall of Fame, uh, we want to welcome you. We appreciate you being here. This is our 30th annual event. 30 years we've been doing this thing. So this is a special evening. Uh, you're going to hear some great stories. You're going to meet some high quality people tonight, some great kids, um, and all that in store for later this evening. But to start our program tonight, I want to welcome the cadets of Thomasville High School's Air Force Junior ROTC, who will present our nation's colors this evening. At this time, would you please rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem, which will be performed tonight by Reverend William Collins. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the certainly couldn't do this without them. TNB, uh, who sponsors our meal, uh, Southwest Georgia Farm Credit, who sponsors our programs, and uh, our newest sponsor, TC Federal, uh, who sponsored our banners behind me tonight. Uh, very grateful for your support. Would you please give them a hand? So for 30 years, this organization has come together once a year to celebrate local sports heroes. But this event also plays an important role in our community, giving back to our community. You see, the mission of the Hall of Fame is not only to recognize quality people, but to also support the YMCA's work around youth sports in our community. Over the last 30 years, this event has raised almost a quarter million dollars that provides opportunities for kids in this community. Supporting our youngest athletes is truly paying it forward to the next generation of Hall of Famers. On behalf of the YMCA, our staff, and our board, I want to thank you for supporting this event, for making a difference in the lives of our local young people. Thank you. And now we move on to the recognition of our student athletes, uh, student athletes of the year. Several years ago, we announced the renaming of this award in honor of the gentleman sitting to my left, Mr. Bill Rainey. As one of the founding board members of this organization, Bill has chaired the Hall of Fame for many years, but more importantly, has lived a life as a role model. Tonight we have the privilege of recognizing yet another outstanding group of student athletes who will be receiving the Bill Rainey Student Athlete of the Year Award. Every year the athletic directors from our local schools as well as Thomas University select two athletes of the year based on this criteria. An individual who has made outstanding contributions to his and her team while displaying strong character leadership, and community involvement. These eight young people who you are about to meet are the definition of well-rounded students. 
They get the job done on the field, on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. Their names are engraved on the plaques to my left and will be permanently displayed for all to see on the Wall of Fame at the YMCA after tonight. Students, when I call your name, go ahead and come up to the front. Uh, we're going to ask you to stand here uh, so we can brag on you for a second. And we'll do that two at a time by school. So when I hear, uh, excuse me, when I call your name, uh, if you'll go ahead and come forward. Um, and then we get, to, we get to say a few good things about you here. So our 2024 Student Athletes of the Year are as follows. Representing Brookwood School, Kariana Williams and Walker Jackson. <laughs> Kariana is the daughter of Takira Brown and Kenneth Hayes. Kariana is a four-sport athlete in basketball, soccer, softball, and track. Among her athletic accomplishments, she's a three-time 100-meter hurdle champion, region champion, a two-time region champion in the 100-meter uh, dash. She was the 100-meter meter hurdle state runner-up as a sophomore. On the basketball court, she is the two-time defensive player of the year not to mention an honorable mention all-region performer in both softball and soccer. Outside of sports, she is involved with small groups with the Presbyterian Church, volunteers at the YMCA, is a National Honor Society leader, Spanish Honor Society yearbook staff, and works concessions at Brookwood events. <laughs> yes, she literally does it all and sells popcorn too. <laughs> She is currently undecided on her college plans for next year, but she tells me that she is going to study nursing wherever she goes. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a hand for our Brookwood Female Athlete of the Year, Kariana Williams. Walker Jackson is our Male Athlete of the Year from Brookwood. Walker is the son of Brian and Melanie Jackson. He is a two-sport athlete in baseball. You could probably guess the other sport <laughs> from his six foot nine frame. Walker plays power forward and center on the hardwood for Brookwood, where he was region player of the year last year, and made the all state team. Basketball people will tell you that one of the rarest feats in the sport is to earn a triple double on the court. Triple double is uh, double digits in points rebounds and assists. Walker had two of those last year alone. Led his team to a 26 and three record and a region championship last year. Recently he was selected to play on the prestigious Atlanta Celtics AAU team. If you know basketball, you know that's a big deal. That, that, uh, they don't invite anybody to play with the Atlanta Celtics in the AAU. Uh, circuit and includes some of the top players from the state of Georgia. Off the court, Walker is a member of First Presbyterian Church. It was a part of a mission trip to Kenya where he helped build a church and school. He is an AP scholar, National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, three years on the headmaster's list, and in his downtime, volunteers at the Thomas County Food Bank. As far as future plans, and this is hot off the press because he just signed this morning, uh, but next year Walker will be attending Embry-Riddle University on a basketball scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Brookwood's Male Athlete of the Year, Mr. Walker Jackson. Our Female Student Athlete of the Year from Thomas County Central is Paige Parkerson. She is the daughter of Chad and Laura Parkerson. Paige is a two-sport athlete in flag football and soccer. As you may have heard, this fall marked the inaugural season for Central's girls flag football program. And if you want to know who was largely responsible for getting that team started, well that was Paige Parkerson. Last year she started a petition around school and I'm told got over 150 signatures uh, to support the sanctioning of a flag football team. She's now playing both ways as a leader and key contributor for that team. 
On the soccer field, Paige is a three-time all-region player and was the Region 1-6A Defensive Player of the Year last year as a junior. She also excels academically among her many accomplishments. She is a member of the National Honor Society, the I Lead Youth Leadership Program, was named a Georgia Certificate of Merit recipient. She is vice president of her class and has served on both state and local advisory boards for various uh, efforts with the school system. Somehow she finds time to volunteer at local elementary schools, vacation Bible school, soccer camps, and numerous other community endeavors. And by the way, Paige was just recently crowned homecoming queen. Her plan is to attend Georgia Southern University next fall. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a hand for Paige Parkerson. Our male athlete of the year from Thomas County Central is Jaden Rubo. He is the son of Katrina Rubo. Jaden is a starting linebacker on the football team for the defending state champion Yellow Jackets. As a key player on Central's championship run, Jaden led the team with over 100 tackles last year and earned first team all region selection. He has continued his high level play while serving as a team captain. His position coach, Seth Boyette, said this about him. Jaden is a natural leader on and off the field. When the game is on the line, Jaden is the one you want on your team. He gets the job done. His impact on the field is undeniable, but what sets him apart is his dedication off the field. He carries a 3.8 GPA, is active on the central broadcasting team, mm -hmm. frequently can be heard on Fridays on the Yellow Jacket tailgate show. He will graduate from Central with honors and was invited to join National Honor Society. I can also vouch that when Jaden is not playing football or studying, he can be found at the local YMCA pool working as a lifeguard. He is currently undecided on college for next year. But ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm applause to Mr. Jaden Rubo. <laughs> Representing Thomasville High School are Anna Shokat and Trip Gable. Our female athlete of the year from Thomasville High School is Anna Shokat. She is the daughter of Max and Kristen Shokat. She is a three-sport athlete, cheerleading, volleyball, and tennis. She is a three-year team captain and all-region performer for the Bulldog volleyball team. Anna is a three-year member of the THS varsity cheer team where she earned All-American cheerleader honors this year. She was named a scholar athlete for both her, her cheer and volleyball teams. Outside of sports, Anna is a member of Thomasville Church where she serves as a small group leader for children's ministry. In the classroom, Anna received uh, twice the AP Scholar Award, the Georgia Certificate of Merit Award, and has maintained an all-A honor roll for four years in high school. She serves as an officer of the National Honor Society. She is treasurer for the student government and was most recently crowned Miss Bulldog for the homecoming court. Anna has narrowed her future plans down to two colleges, the University of Florida and the University of Georgia. Mm. Okay. And I've got an opinion on that if you want to get with me afterwards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a big hand to our Thomasville High School Athlete of the Year, Anna Shokat. Our Male Athlete of the Year from Thomasville High School is Trip Gable. Tripp is the son of Mike and Mary Gable. He's a four-year letterman on the football team where he plays receiver and special teams for the Bulldogs, a key member of the Bulldog baseball team where he plays shortstop and pitcher. On the baseball diamond, Tripp was first team all-region at shortstop in 2024, named to the Georgia Dugout Club's top 100 list. He was also the Baseball Scholar Athlete of the Year for having the highest GPA on his team. Off the field, Tripp is a member of Thomasville First United Methodist Church, where he has been involved in everything from youth choir to vacation Bible school to youth groups, you name it. He's done it. In the classroom, Tripp is a National Honor Society student, all A's honor roll, 
and has been recognized by the National Society of High School Scholars. And if that's not enough, Tripp is active in the community where he volunteers his time with Hands On Thomas County, Treehouse Advocacy Center, and the Backpack Buddies Feeding Program. Uh, I'm told that next year he's still undecided on school, but he's narrowed it down to a few, including Georgia, Mercer, Auburn, and Clemson. Ladies and gentlemen, Male Athlete of the Year from Thomasville High School, Mr. Tripp Gable. <laughs> Our final two Athletes of the Year representing Thomas University are McKenna Schwartzman and Diego Alonzo. <laughs> McKenna Schwartzman is a senior defender from Tallahassee for the Nighthawks women's soccer team. She is a four-year varsity starter at TU, having played in 57 matches in her TU career. As a defender, McKenna does a lot of the dirty work, so she doesn't get a benefit of having a lot of stats. However, I'm sure she would tell you that she did score two goals and had an assist in her career, so <laughs> we're going to acknowledge that. Off the field, McKenna Schwartzman is as good as they come. Listen to this. She will graduate in May with her bachelor's in psychology and a minor in education. She's made the TU president's list every semester of her college career and is on pace to graduate with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Wow. No pressure, McKenna. <laughs> Among her honors, she made the conference all academic team four years in a row the NAIA Scholar Athlete Team, and most recently took home the Southern States Conference Champions of Character Award. Here's the words from McKenna's coach, Julie Orlowski. McKenna's contributions to our program are immeasurable. If you could quantify character into a statistic, she would lead the country in integrity, respect, responsibility, sportsmanship, and servant leadership. On the field, she puts in all the hard work so that others can get the credit. That's McKenna. She is a fierce competitor with a servant's heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating our Thomas University Female Athlete of the Year, Ms. McKenna Schwartzman. Our male athlete of the year from TU is Diego Alonso. Diego is a swimmer for the Nighthawks from Madrid, Spain. Some of Diego's swimming accomplishments finished third in the Sun Conference Championships in the 400 medley and 800 freestyle relays. He took sixth in the 200 freestyle relay at this year's Nationals and was a second team All-American in the 200 breaststroke at the 2022 and 23 national championships. When he's not swimming fast, he carries a 3.86 GPA as a business major. And like McKenna, he was the recipient of the Champion of Character Award. He's been on the president's list multiple times, Honor Society, Vice President of the International Students Association. He also served as an RA, which is a resident assistant, for two years. But maybe my favorite thing about McKenna is that tonight he no, is Diego. joined Diego. by Diego. Excuse me. <laughs> McKenna, you had too much good stuff. I just couldn't help it. Diego's parents traveled all the way to Thomasville, Georgia tonight from Madrid, Spain, to be with us. Thank you for coming. What a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a nice hand for our Thomas University Male Athlete of the Year, Diego Alonzo. From our community nominations, the Sports Hall of Fame board has selected another terrific group of inductees. We look forward to a brief response by each inductee and encourage you to visit with the inductees after the banquet. At this time, 
I will turn over the program to our co-MCs, Mr. Bill Rainey and Mr. Randy Young, to introduce our inductees. Unselfish. Is there any higher compliment that can be offered about an athlete? But in addition, is there any better word that can describe a successful teacher? And especially a middle school teacher. When she was a student in the Thomas County School System, Gwen Thomas had already been earmarked by teachers, coaches, her friends, fellow students as a special person. One of her classmates shared the following with me. It was clear from very early on that Gwen had something different about her. She was a natural leader. All of our friends just gravitated toward her because she made everyone around her better just by being who she was. The same held very true for her performance on the basketball court for Central. When she arrived at uh, Central, everybody knew there was a core of very talented athletes around her in that class, including fellow Hall of Fame member Selena Bynum. But everyone also knew that Gwen was the straw that stirred the drink for the Yellow Jacket team. Because of her talent and unselfish nature as a person and player, she improved everybody on the floor around her, every game of every season, and raised the performance of everybody around her as she did. I asked Ken Harper, Coach Harper was one of her uh, coaches on the basketball team, and this is what he had to say about her. She was the most versatile player we had on our team and one of the most versatile I've ever coached. Capable of doing anything on the basketball court to help us win. She could handle the ball well enough to break a full court press when needed. She played in the low post, but if a team chose to play her man to man, she was perfectly comfortable going outside with equal effectiveness. Gwen was just very difficult for opposing teams to handle anywhere she was on the floor. A ferocious and great rebounder who had a great shot from anywhere, determined and unselfish. All of those attributes led Central's girls to the state championship game in 1988 with Gwen leading the way. The first Central basketball team to play in a state championship game since 1967 and the last one since. Her leadership would earn her a scholarship to Georgia Southern where she again excelled for the Eagles on the hardwood. And I'm not going to go through all of the accolades you can look in your program. She was named all-conference in 1992, but here's the thing that got me. If you look in the current Georgia Southern women's uh, basketball, uh, the women's basketball media guide, her name appears no less than 32 times. 32. But here's the thing about Gwen. If you want a living definition of her unselfish nature, all you need to do is know that she graduated from Georgia Southern with a marketing degree, but decided in 1994 to go back to school to get her math and language arts middle grades teaching certificate. And for the last 26 years, she has impacted countless young lives teaching language arts at Langston Chapel Middle School at Statesboro. And of all of the accolades that she has earned, I guarantee you there's none that she's more proud of than being named the Teacher of the Year there in 2011. A true Yellow Jacket legend. Ladies and gentlemen, Gwen Thomas Harvey, our first inductee. It's different standing up here in front of adults as opposed to <laughs> students, by the way. So I'm, kept, I'm a little nervous here. But um, First of all, I'm giving honor to God who gave me the opportunity Amen. and the, the privilege to be here tonight because without him of my journey when I was a little girl all the way to where I am now, I'm going to thank God for that one. Amen. I really stand here before you all filled with gratitude and humility because those of you who were in, middle, in, in when I was in school, I was that quiet child that I didn't talk to anybody. <laughs> sitting in class with Miss Connor, she had me sitting in the front, and I didn't talk um, at all. It didn't matter if it was her class, but even with Coach Connor on the basketball court and Coach Harper, it was totally different um, because I was that quiet kid that um, my actions were by what I did rather than what I said. Um, haven't changed. I feel like I'm standing up here as this young kid um, 
nervous. If you hear the nervousness in my voice, I am very nervous. Um, I want to express thanks for my family who's here, who's with me tonight. Um, thank you for your unwavering support and encouragement that you've given me. Um, you've been my foundation through my ups and downs. So for me, in this moment, um, as much as yours, it is mine. Um, that's my unselfishness that, selfishness that I have because if it wasn't for you all, I wouldn't be here. Thank you to my parents. Thank you for all the love and support you've given me through my life, especially my journey with basketball, my brother, my sister, traveling up and down the highway even after high school to Georgia Southern. Um, your belief in me has been the source of my strength and my motivation. Um, and I'm going to start right there because I told Mr. Mr. Tom that I was going to take 30 seconds. <laughs> it's good. I, I, I really did, so I'm going to take my time because I, I put some thought in this and it's really from my heart. Um, I truly appreciate everything that you've done from the small moments and the, the big sacrifices that you all made just for little old me. Your encouragement have shaped, helped shape me, the person that I am today. I'm so grateful for the values that you all instilled in me. Thank you always for being there, for cheering me on, believing in me, even when I doubted myself. My parents, you are my king and my queen. Thank you to my brother and my sister for not, y'all not just my brother and my sister, you are my friend as well. Um, you would never let anything happen to me because y'all know I'm the youngest. Thank you for that fun in that backyard. Um, when we tore up the, the grass that my parents so loved, uh, <laughs> that we made us a court, uh, we made us a Six Flags, whatever it was, we did it in the backyard. So I'm glad the grass grew back. Um, my brother and sister took care of me when I couldn't. Uh, so thank you for that love, that support, and the laughter. It means the world to me. I have never told you all this, but it does. Thanks to my sister-in-law for the love and your presence and your support today. You wasn't on a journey for me, but now you are on our journey. Uh, you made this day a little bit more special because I thought she was going to be gone, but now you're here. So thank you for being here with my milestone here. I'm standing here. My husband and my children, you're my heart, uh, my soul, my, my everything. Um, thanks for being my biggest fans and my strongest pillows. Your love, support, and laughter also brings full joy to my life. Um, my husband, thank you, Horace, for just being on that journey when we started at Georgia Southern in 89. Thank you for being that person that helped me get through those times when I couldn't be and there talk to my mom because back in that day, you had to call your parents, collect. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you couldn't call them every day, collect. So thank you for that. Thank you for being my, uh, my college sweetheart, taking me uh, when they left the mantle. You picked it up for me to take me on through my college years. Um, you gave me the confidence to believe that I can do anything and all things. Uh, thank you for being there so that I can talk to you. Thank you for my children, for filling the house with love, joy. Um, my other son is not here, but uh, thank you all because y'all know y'all are my lifeline, y'all are my joy, y'all my everything, um, and I love you all dearly. Um, thank you to my teammates uh, because I wouldn't be here in the situation that I'm in now for my basketball career if it wasn't for them. Um, so thank you for that. 
thank you to my coaches. I saw some people that I haven't seen in a while, Coach Connor, Coach Harper, um, Coach Ward, Miss Connor, Miss Green, names that I, I don't remember everybody because you all know when I left, I didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a while since I've been. I come back and visit, but like my grandmother used to tell me, it's, been on a, it's always on a match. You strike that match and it goes out very quickly. So I'm here and gone when nobody knows that I'm here. Um, Central High School, Ms. Green, the Board of Education, thank you for that time, um, for the time that I spent helping you doing those things wherever you are. Y'all have instilled Coach Connor. Uh, I have to tell you, I love you dearly from my heart. I know we're family, but you have instilled me, instilled in me hard work, discipline, and teamwork so I can make that journey when I transition over to a teacher, Miss Connor, that I wasn't planning on doing, mm -hmm. but God took me in a different direction. So I'm really appreciative for that. Um, thank you to the fans. I don't know who was able to come see. I know uh, we was talking, I was talking to someone and we was talking about the basketball games, the rival between Thomasville High and Central. Um, those were great games, so thank you for that. But last but not least, I thank the Hall of Fame committee for you. Um, just little me um, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of the Hall of Family, Hall of Fame family. So I'm grateful for you all. Um, and the last thing I want to say to you young people, um, I want to dedicate this induction to you all who ever dream big and work hard to achieve dreams, no matter what it is, whatever challenges you face, keep pushing forward. Don't let anybody change your direction. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So thank you again for this remarkable honor, and I'm proud to be a part of that incredible family of the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Our next inductee is Daniel Jordan. To say Daniel was a special athlete is putting it mildly. He was a difference maker on the football field, and the baseball diamond for the Bulldogs. In football, he was a three-year varsity letterman as a wide receiver, where he was selected all-region and all-state honorable mention during his senior year. He led the Bulldogs to back-to-back -back region championships his junior and senior years. Besides being an outstanding wide receiver, he also played defensive back. He was an all-region punter. He returned kickoffs. He returned punts. The only time he came off the field was on extra points and field goals. <laughs> his impact, according to one of his coaches, was his impact on the THS athletics went beyond football because the sport in which he really excelled was baseball. He possessed those skills necessary to be a great baseball player. He was quick, he was fast, he was competitive, and had a strong desire to be first. Therefore, you can guess who was the leadoff hitter for the Bulldogs, Daniel. He did not hit home runs, he got on base and was a threat to steal at any time. He harassed and distracted many a pitcher. He lettered all four years as a player and was instrumental in the success of the Diamond Dogs. The Thomasville baseball team was back-to-back -back region champs his junior and senior years. As a junior playing shortstop and pitching, he was selected the Region 1 AAA Player of the Year. He was selected to the all-region team in his junior and senior years. 
He participated in the North-South All-Star Game. After graduation, he was chose he chose to attend Middle Georgia College on a baseball scholarship, where again, he excelled. In 1994, his team won the team, in 1994, he won the Team Most Valuable Player Award and was selected to the All-Conference Team, the All-Tourney Team. He was a Terry McDaniel Award winner. He was again selected All-Conference the next year and he led his team to the 1995 Region Tournament Championship. His team at Middle Georgia were the 1995 Division I Junior College National Champions. In 1996, Daniel continued his play at Kennesaw State University. There his team were Region Champions, and again he helped lead his team to become national champions. The next year, his team became the 1997 Region and Conference champs and finished third in the national championship tournament. Outside of baseball, Daniel has spent his time volunteering, coaching young kids at the West Georgia Expo youth baseball team and the Covington Club, Cub baseball team. I would be remiss if I didn't let you know Daniel has been inducted into the Middle Georgia Baseball Hall of Fame, the Kennesaw State Hall of Fame, and now it's with great pleasure we're going to induct him into Thomasville, Thomas County Sports Hall of Fame, Mr. Daniel Jordan. Uh, I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my beautiful wife, Kim, my family, the committee sponsors, Mr. Ramey, Tom, current members and in tonight's incoming inductees. It's an honor and a privilege. There are no words to express the gratitude, appreciation I have my family, for my coaches, for my teammates, and the community of Thomasville. There are no words. Let's talk about this YMCA. I was a YMCA kid. I had all the shirts. And kids, back then, we didn't have jerseys. They were just, it said YMCA. <laughs> and it was a color. So you had your purple, your red, your black, your pink, whatever. So every season you play, I, I went up there, I swam. My sister Pam would drop me off at five o'clock in the morning. I would swim till my mom picked me up to take me to school. And I'm pretty sure if you had a kid around the Y, early 80s, mid 80s, I probably stole a ride from you or rode on the hood or something. I, I, I caught rides from everywhere, going from basketball to baseball to football to swimming, back to swimming in the afternoon after football practice. So the Y was very important to me in my development. It was someplace I could go and I could compete and I could shoot ball and I could be a kid. I probably still have the shirt, so I'm going to look for it when I go home. <laughs> to my mom, you've been there from the beginning. Thank you. I love you and appreciate you. <laughs> to my sister Pam, and my adopted sister, Rhonda, they were, they were the couple that would come pick me up, drop me off, pick me up, drop me off. So I'm in forever debt to you guys. To my brother, Dale, he taught me to swing a bat. Thank you. To my second family, the Bobos, Miss Bobo, Greatest grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> to Mike, he's not here. He's got different things to do, but <laughs> I learned how to compete with him. I could not play basketball. He beat me so bad, I asked for a basketball goal one Christmas. 
And Coach Christie made me play my eighth grade year, and I couldn't stand it. The sound of his dress shoes hitting the court could turn around a herd of elephants. We're in gold, not yellow, dummy. So gold was full court press, yellow was half court press. I still remember that, Coach. That's because of you. So, Laurie, I apologize for holding you down. and We popped that zip in the ninth grade. So, Laurie was like the little sister to us. So, we're, we're sophomores, Mike and I, and she's, she's a freshman, poor, poor thing. And uh, we noticed she's got a bump, so we hold her down and pop it. Miss Bobo's yelling at us. Coach Bobo comes in, what are y'all doing? So we run out. Was, I had to get you there. So. so, but I also want to talk about this, and we talked about how special this community is. It's not Thomasville, the place, it's the people. You know, you see the young people now, you see our programs. Uh, 30 years, you see these people. 1987, we hosted a region championship right across the, the field. There were three people, Charlie Ward, Eric Curry, Sean Jones. That's three national championships at three different Division I football schools. And guess what? One of them was a Heisman Trophy winner. So I tell that story to my friends that I've played ball with in college, to their friends, and I've never came across someone that could name three captains like that with three national championships, and oh, by the way, one of the greatest athletes to ever put on cleats or basketball shoes, and that's Charlie Ward. That's what I got to watch growing up. 86, 87, 88. So I'm so honored and privileged to be up here. Um, Coach Bobo, can't leave you out. You, you helped me, help me prepare. You taught me how to prepare. You taught me how to prepare tomorrow. You taught me how to prepare for next week. And I think I'm still preparing for Peach County <laughs> because I think either the Tuesday or the Wednesday night, I, I think we stayed till 9 o'clock, you know. But thank you for being hard on me and teaching me how to do things right. So I'd say he never lied to us, but he did lie to me one night. We're in Kendrick. We're playing Colum we're, we're in Columbus playing Kendrick. They beat us 55 to 19. And at halftime, Shedrick will remember, he probably had a headache too. So I'm, I went in the first play. We ran a play. I come in with a play. Latron Hadley is turning his face mask around. And he, and he goes, Oh, you coming in? Good. So I go out. I get to the huddle. Reggie Garland, Reggie Garland can put his hands around football. So he's a grown man as a sophomore. He's turning his face mask around. Brian Barnes, Eric, uh, Mathis Curry, they're readjusting. Mike's got blood coming out of his nose. And at halftime, Coach Bobo goes, oh, yeah, we can beat him. <laughs> <laughs> so years later, here's the story. Coach Fields, Coach Harbin, and we were just sitting there going, hey, did we ever have a chance against Kendrick? Oh, we knew two weeks ahead. Yeah, we were going to get going out. <laughs> we were just trying not to get killed. And I said, we got killed the first quarter. So, thank you, Coach. To my dad, who taught me very important, he had a saying, you can't fish on credit. Never understood that. He kept, he kept fishing on credit. He loved fishing. So it was a now, what is he talking about? And it was just simply this. If you don't like your results, how are you fishing? How are you preparing? Did you do the things to earn it? And I thank him for that. So again, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Football coaches and fans understand, or most fans, 
understand offensive linemen rarely get a lot of glory. In fact, I've heard it said inside coaching circles that you know an offensive lineman's doing his job really well when you don't notice him. It just comes with a position. But those who know the game also know you can't be a good lineman and be a dummy. And needless to say, that adage holds very true regarding our next inductee, Scott Neesmith. Now, I'm going to go off script here because trying to find information about an offensive lineman to be able to share can be daunting, even though Scott was a two-time all-region player. The wide receivers and the quarterbacks and the running backs all get the stories and the pictures in the newspaper. So I went straight to a source that I could trust, Coach Will Roy Cooley, to ask what he could share about Scott Neesmith that I could share with you. Now, the first thing he said was that Scott was the most coachable player he ever had, that everything that was asked of him, he did and then some. He was the second quarterback on the field, so intelligent, he knew exactly what everybody was supposed to do. And if the quarterback didn't check out of a play or something, that Scott was yelling at him that he, he, he needed to pay attention to what was going on. But he shared with me a story. And Coach, you're just going to have to forgive me. He said the statute of limitations had run out. So I'm going to share this story that he said illustrates the type of player that Scott Neesmith was. Central High School seniors in 1976 were pretty sporty. They knew they were going to be pretty good. They were confident. And of course, the 70s were a different time. The young people here don't understand. It was nothing to watch people on television smoking cigarettes. You look, watch the college games or pro games on Saturdays and Sundays, and there would be big chawls of tobacco and so forth. Well, the seniors, Coach Cooley said he walked into his office, and all the seniors met him, and he knew that something was up. And they asked him if it was possible for them to be able to chew tobacco during practice. <laughs> and Coach Cooley said, boys, we are not doing that. Get out there, get to work. But apparently, they were very insistent. This happened over and over and over, where three or four of them, groups would come and say, Coach, you sure you won't let us chew tobacco during practice? Well, finally, he thought, this is a thing. Coaches will know what I'm saying here. Sometimes coaches are playing chess when their players are playing checkers. Coach Cooley got an idea. He said, you know what? I think I know what we can do to fix this. So he called them all together and said, boys, if you bring a note from your parents that says you have permission to chew tobacco during practice, then we're good to go. He said, miraculously, the next day, every one of them showed up with a note. <laughs> he said he found it curious that at least one of them had the handwriting of his daughter, who was a senior cheerleader at Central. So he knew where the notes had come from, but he had proof in his hands in case something were to go wrong. So lines him up, ready to head onto the field, out of the field. He said, boys, load them up. If you're going to do this, now we're going to do it. So they got him a big old char, red man, or bull Durham, or whatever it was, and they run out. Well, coach decided to change things up a little bit that day. Most coaches end up with conditioning at the end of practice. This practice, they started with conditioning, which means they were running wind sprints. About three or four wind sprints into it, he noticed some of the players were lifting their face masks up to spit. And he said, hold on, boys. We're not spitting on the field. That wasn't part of this agreement. I hear moans from the crowd, because y'all know where this is headed. They ran a couple more sprints, and the last thing they were supposed to run was a goal line, which is going to be at the end of practice. Well, this particular day, it was going to be right after the conditioning which was a very physical thing. Number one offense against number one defense. Got to score, got to keep them from scoring. He said he noticed that a handful of them were walking a little slower than they normally walked, heading down toward the goal line. And he noticed a few of them kind of looking at each other, but without saying anything. He said, line it up and run it. And when the center bent over the ball, and I know we just got through eating, he deposited his lunch on top of his hands and the ball. And Coach Cooley said, don't you take your hands off that ball. <laughs> because the center, when you put your hands on the ball, you take them off, that's a penalty. You can't do it. Run the play. Coach said that the quarterback running back and everybody else looked at him like he had worms crawling out of his ears. <laughs> Run the play. So the center snapped the ball. The quarterback dropped it probably on purpose. The running back went the wrong way on purpose. And coach said, does anybody want to spit out your tobacco? Whereupon every single one of the players went to the sidelines and spit it out, those that weren't already losing their lunch. 
He said that the issue of tobacco at practice never came back up. <laughs> Amazing. But the only guy on that offense that did exactly what he was supposed to do and what he had been coached to do was that center. And that skin, center was our next indu inductee, Scott Neesmith. <laughs> Scott? Old tails get taller as the years go by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am truly humbled and, and honored by this. Uh, you know, no matter where I've lived or, or traveled, Thomasville has always been my home. Um, and so I'm sincerely grateful for this hometown recognition. Um, I'm particularly thankful to my old friend, Mike Singletary, because I, I know he's pretty instrumental in this and part of this. Uh, and it's just that special relationship, Mike, between a quarterback and a center. And if you haven't been there, you don't know about it. <laughs> uh, and I think uh, my, my coaches from, from high school, um, from the Y League, uh, first coach I guess I can remember having was uh, Wendell Johnson. Uh, he was a, a good, good man, and, uh, and he kept that with me through the years. He helped me get one of my first jobs out of, out of high school. Um, so it was a, he was a good man. Uh, I thank Coach Cooley and Coach Garland, Coach Ward and Coach Connors. These men were certainly instrumental in, in uh, shaping my life, not only on the football field, but, you know, for going forward. Um, and with football, I missed mean, the sport I played. You know, we learned many things um, and different uh, uh, lessons as you went along with it. But, you know, we, we learned discipline, dedication, teamwork, courage commitment and preparation, um, but the thing that kind of stood out to me as I kind of tried to prepare a few remarks was, uh, was tenacity. Um, if you look up tenacity, it means resolve or persistence, a drive, doggedness, steadfastness, and determination. Um, basically, it taught us to play until the whistle blows, play until the buzzer sounds. Um, and that was a lesson that I found uh, was really helpful going forward in life. I learned to apply it in school, um, in my career, in marriage, in parenting, now grandparenting, um, and really all of life. You just, you just keep going, you keep grinding, you stay with it, you, you play to the whistle blows. Um, the Apostle Paul in the Bible, in Philippians, he even uses somewhat of a similar analogy in Philippians uh, chapter 3. He says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Um, so tenacity is, is, is an important thing, I think, in our lives. Uh, some days I'm afraid it uh, starts to be lost from our sports. Um, you know, you can see a lot of kids these days, not these that were honored tonight. I was really... Glad to, to hear all of that, but uh, you know we just tend to give up too easy sometimes. We want to walk off the field or throw in the towel. It seems like, but if we can just get back and uh, you know have tenacity in our sports and, and learn to play to the buzzer sounds, to the whistle blows, I, you know I think we could all be better off. Um, but I do appreciate this award so much. Appreciate the committee, your hard work in doing this. Um, Y'all have reached the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> uh, but, I, but I do appreciate it. Uh, it's, it was 50 years ago when I played ball at Central. Um, I thought the law statutes run out on this by then. <laughs> uh, and I appreciate my family coming out tonight and being here, the support they've always given me for so many things. Uh, my wife didn't know me uh, back in the Thomasville days, and uh, I had to go out of town to find me a wife. <laughs> but, uh, but she stuck with me for over 40 years, and, uh, and, and I appreciate it. Uh, I left y'all my brother in town, uh, Mark and e. Smith, and, uh, uh, and uh, I hope y'all uh, hadn't been bothered by that too much. <laughs> and, and he's even here tonight to, to help me honor but I do appreciate it, and I appreciate the time this evening, and I hope you all have a good evening. As many of you know, to be a successful golfer requires a unique set of skills. You have to stand on the tee box, be coordinated and strong enough to drive the ball a long way, usually 250 plus yards while later having enough finesse 
to be able to put the golf ball into a four-inch hole discerning the speed and the break of the green. Our next inductee possessed those skills. He also had a desire to win that made him very competitive. Dave Middleton played several sports growing up through the programs at the Y. However, he loved to play golf, which he played often and excelled at an early age. At age 16, Dave won the Glen Arvin Country Club Championship, which at that time made him the youngest golfer ever to do so. In high school, he was a standout on the Thomasville High School golf team, earning all-state honors in his junior year, his senior year, and in his senior year, he led the golf team to the Region 1 AAA State Championship in 1957. He was twice runner-up in the State Georgia High School Golf Championship Tournament. He was runner-up to low medalist Tommy Aaron, who later turned pro and won the coveted green jacket by winning the Masters. After graduation, Dave attended Florida State University on a golf scholarship and earned a degree in finance. After graduation, he served his country by joining the Navy and traveling the world, serving four years on a destroyer and earning the rank of lieutenant. Wherever Dave and his family chose to live, he became an active member of his community. It didn't take long before people recognized his leadership qualities and his willingness to work. While living in Tallahassee, he became a founding member of the Governor's Club. He was a board member of the Seminole Boosters Club and was instrumental in leading the Boosters Club to establish two scholarships, one for golf, one for football, of course. Dave also realized a need for a golf complex that would enable FSU to compete with other major universities for the best golfers available. And hence, he spearheaded, no FSU term <coughs> intended, uh, he spearheaded the, off, the efforts which led to the now known Dave Middleton Golf Complex at Seminole Legacy Golf Course. This $7 million state-of-the-art golf facility is second to none in producing skills, skilled and competitive collegiate golfers. That's Dave Middleton. After moving to Jacksonville, Dave soon became involved again, being a founding member of the Pablo Creek Golf Club. He served as president of the 1992 Gator Bowl. He served 30 years on the bowl selection committee and as a trustee. Outside of athletics, he served as a board member of the Ronald McDonald House in Jacksonville. As one person said of Dave, he is a giver and a doer. Ladies and gentlemen, our next inductee, Dave Middleton. Well. We're going to go further back than some of these stories, I tell you. Uh, uh, this is talking about, somebody mentioned the Heisman. I thought I, when I walked in here with all of these people, I said, wait a minute. I feel like I'm in the downtown athletic club in New York for the, for the Heisman Trophy <laughs> presentation. I'm, I'm Dave Middleton. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank everybody that's here. Uh, I'm so proud. I got my whole family here, uh, every one of them. And... Uh, uh, I am so excited uh, that, to be honored. I want to thank uh, Bill Rady, of course, the heart and soul, as you know, of the Hall of Fame, and of course Tom Everett, uh, and I'll tell you more about his ancestors in, in just a minute. Uh, the, uh, first of all, the first thing I want to do, oh, I did want to recognize, I see Charlie Ward Sr. back there, and Charlie Ward Sr. and I caddied at, at, Capital, at uh, Glenarvan, Charlie, 70 years ago. 
we were caddying. And I see my friend Joe Harvard. Joe Harvard was on that uh, state championship team, and he made the clutch. We, we had a sudden death playoff, and he made the clutch uh, par that, that got us by and got us that team championship. Uh, the, I do want to make sure that everybody knows this. I don't deserve this. Uh, but I got arthritis, and I don't deserve that either. <laughs> So I'm taking this thing. You ain't gonna let me. That's a great line. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I thought about it when they called me. I said, you know, I wish I'd played a tough sport like football, basketball, baseball, wrestling, whatever it happened to be. But uh, the problem was, uh, I went to the, uh, in the ninth grade, I played JV, I went to the football camp at uh, uh, Camp Piney Woods. And if you hadn't been to hell, uh, that's the place to go there, I tell you. <laughs> I, I had my, the heads of it were Coach, uh, Coach Erskine Mills and Coach uh, Joe Summerall. And after the, um, after the, it was over, they had a, uh, a you know, a, a review of the players. And the first thing they did was go through the line of the great players and, you know, kind of skip over the Brian Harvard, uh, 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 Joel Arrington, a uh, fellow named uh, Doug Vick, Kevin's dad. I remember Brian telling me one time, he said, I hate practice. I hate practice. I, that damn Doug Vick comes and kills me every time. Just about to take your, hair, take your head off. He was tough, and this one was too the one you still got here. Uh, anyway, uh, at, at football camp, they get through, they do the survey. So uh, they probably kind of got to where, I think it went something kind of like this. Coach uh, Erskine Mills says, uh, well, Joe, uh, what about that skinny kid Middleton? Uh, he doesn't weigh 120 pounds yet, does he? He said, i tell you about Dave Middleton. He is small. But he's slow. <laughs> and I, that's really when I realized I better get me another sport. Uh, and, it, and, and it was great. Uh, I'm so proud uh, that this honor takes me back to my beloved YMCA. And don't want to get teary eyed about that, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't know anybody that got more out of this YMCA in the old building. It's probably built before the Civil War uh, it, it, than, than me. I really did. My mother worked all her life. She was a saint, by the way. And uh, so every morning when I was old enough, I got up, rode my bicycle down, down to the Y, spent all day long down there playing every sport they had, playing uh, uh every activity that they had. And then I uh, got on my bicycle and went home. And as you recall, you had to be there uh, by, uh, when the uh, street lights came on and the lightning bugs came out. Uh, to, to, and then the next day, of course, you went back and did the exact same thing. Uh, I was literally uh, raised at the Y and, and I'm, I went through some really great leaders. Let me tell you real quickly. Um, it, I will say too, God bless the, the YMCA. It was uh, Tom Sawyer and Mayberry all rolled into one. It really was, it was the 50s or something else. Uh, first I had Mr. Red Milton. His name's on the, on the building here. And Mr. Red Milton was a, a wonderful man. He was a mentor. I mean, if you look at the book, you'll see him if you look up mentor. He was terrific. He was intelligent. He was pl uh, pleasant. And he was really a true gentleman. Uh, I told him one, he had to do some, put up with some pretty strange things too. All day long, as you walked in the wine, that was the pool table. I mean, ping pong table, I had one. And I, I, you, everybody played all day long. 
I even won a couple of tournaments up in the, in the, in the Athens Y doubles. But I, I kind of got into it. So one day I went, I asked him for some time, and I met, went into Mr. Red Milton's office, and I said, and my request was that I wanted to be a professional ping pong player. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, uh, he didn't laugh at me. He was a real gentleman about it, but he pretty much uh, convinced me that I'd never make a nickel uh, <laughs> do, doing that. Uh, Mrs. Milton taught Latin and French at Thomasville High School, uh, so I didn't see much of her. <laughs> uh, I'd see her in the hall every once in a while, not, not in class. Uh, next, right out of uh, Presbyterian College with a brief stop in Rome, Georgia, came George Everett, who was, who was just like Mr. M Mr. Milton was his uncle. And he was, he was just a, ter a terrific guy, the same thing, very patient. He t I remember he taught me how to swim. I think that took six or seven years, I don't know. <laughs> he stuck with it. He, uh, he was always there. Uh, now, I know you probably have heard of him, but now the man that, that taught me street smarts, because I certainly didn't know how to do book smarts, he taught me street smarts, and uh, uh, he, he taught me well. And that was Mr. Francis Weston, who the, who the Dawson Street, I think, YMCA is named for. He was terrific. When I walked, went off to college, I mean, went off to the, uh, the Navy, and then worked uh, for Merrill Lynch in, in New York, I mean, in Atlanta. Every time I'd come home, I'd, I'd go see uh, Francis. He was a wonderful man. And, I learned something, of course, every time. Uh, I was just going to say that in, in my career, I have interviewed hundreds of young people. Actually, probably maybe around 1,000 at least. And you would not believe, when we get to that part about leadership and character and is this the right person, is he a stand-up person, I talked about the YMCA every YMCA every time, uh, and and just hoping that everybody got the uh, uh, got the great advantage that I got uh, being in the Thomas y, YMCA. Uh, the uh, it was always wonderful. The good news is too that the Y is still in great uh, uh, great hands with Tom. Uh, Tom, you stand on the shoulders of some. Pretty, pretty broad shoulders, I'll tell you that. And Thomasville is just so fortunate to have this. Even when I was coming along, no other town's ever had it. Thomasville's the only town that had a place like this that don't. And we need to, we need to develop these young children because they're going to lead, the, lead Thomasville and lead the world uh, as, as we go forward. It's just, it's a must that we've got to do it. Um, and I feel sure that all of you that are involved in it, that I see, will, will continue to do what you're doing uh, and, and uh, be the definition of uh, Thomasville, which I think is the greatest place on earth. Thank you. One of my favorite quotes regarding coaching and the profession of teaching is from Pat Conroy. Good coaching is good teaching and nothing else. It's rare to find a great coach. It's rare to find a great teacher. It's even rarer to find an excellent coach who's also an excellent academic teacher. But it's even rarer still to find an excellent football coach who is also the best math teacher in his high school. That's exactly what you have with our next inductee, Bill Shaver. Come to Thomas County Central in 1994 to work as the offensive coordinator under Edge Pilcher. Coach Shaver stepped into arguably the highest profile coordinator position in the whole state of Georgia at the time. You have to remember now, Central was coming off back-to-back -back state championships in 1992 and 93, running Pilcher's vaunted split-back veer offense, so it wasn't like things weren't going well. But being who he was, Coach Pilcher was visionary enough to realize that he needed help to expand what the Yellow Jackets were doing on the offensive side of the ball. But with that offense being something that so many programs didn't run and many players hadn't even seen, he couldn't hire just anybody. And enter young Bill Shaver. 
The rest, as they say, is history. The Shaver guide in that offense, Central would play in four more state championship games, winning three of them. Yellow Jackets also reached the state semifinals in 2003-2007, and each of those offenses under Shaver's meticulous watch. When Coach Pilcher decided to make a career change after that 2007 season, Central looked no further than Bill Shaver to lead the program as head coach, where he would win region championships and be named the Region Coach of the Year twice. He is the second winningest coach in Central football history. With all that said, and I have to say this, his gift of teaching had just as much, if not more, of an impact on this community than anything else he did on the football field. Through his ability to teach math, thousands of young people developed an understanding and appreciation for it, including my daughter. His steady example impacted all those students in the classroom and on the field that were under his tutelage. Dozens of former players and students reached out to me to offer their congratulations and praise for you, Coach. I couldn't get into it. We'd be here all night. Now, we've already been here long enough. I did reach out to Joe Burns, though one of the greatest central players in, in our football history, to share with me what Coach Shaver's lasting legacy was on his life. And he said this, and this will resonate with every player that has been under you. The little things are just as important as the big things. You do the little things right, the big things have a way of falling in line behind them. But if you don't take care of the little things, the big things never happen. Good coaching is good teaching, and few are better than both than my friend, the next inductee into the Sports Hall of Fame, Coach Bill Shaver. Thank you, Randy. Um, first, I'd like to uh, uh, thank Coach Singletary, my good friend, and uh, first off, longtime foe. When I first came to Central, uh, my first game, 1994, we are to play Colquitt County. Colquitt County Packers that year. The defensive coordinator is Mike Singletary. And uh, needless to say, it wasn't a very good start if I was the offensive coordinator. It was not a good start. We lost that game, but we did come on later. We won the state, and, and Mike and him won the state also that year. But we uh, locked horns many, many years, and then, then we were very fortunate later on in Mike's career that he came and joined us back at Central. Uh, and then when Coach Pilcher uh, – uh, left us, I got to be, we, we kind of split his job. I got to be Coach Pilcher's, I got his head football coaching job. Coach Singletary got his athletic director's job. So we got to work hand in hand there together. So thank you, Coach Singletary, for, for uh, nominating me and for the committee for selecting me because the first word, I, I got a call from, from Mr. Bill Rainey. Uh, I, was at, uh, I was at football, and I'm not going to say work because I'm retired. So uh, I was just coaching. As, as my wife says, you still work a whole lot. But, uh, but I was, I was, I was, I was uh, breaking down some film from practice, and uh, Mr. Bill called me and said, hey, you've been selected to the um, Hall of Fame. And I went, who, me? And so uh, the, uh, the first word I can come up with is humbling. And uh, because I've sat out there for much of the last 30 years, so all these banquets, and I've watched my heroes in coaching, Coach Bobo and Coach Hodges, uh, Coach Connor, all right, uh, Coach Ward, and then my biggest hero of here, Coach Pilcher, who I wish would be here. Uh, I saw all those get inducted in there. I saw Heisman Trophy winners, Charlie Ward. I saw guys that have won Super Bowls. And then Mr. Bill calls me and says, you're going to be a member of that group. So it's very, very humbling to, 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 be, a, uh, to be honored to be with that kind of group. But uh, when you think about my life, I think uh, uh, I'm going to go by the, uh, the three Fs that, uh, that Nick Hyder uh, always talked about faith, family, and football. And they go in that order. All right? Because your faith has got to be your foundation. You know, if you're going to be the right family man, you're going to be the right football coach, you're going to be the right kind of person, you've got to have faith as your foundation. And, uh, and I have a verse I think I've always tried to live by. It's Colossians 3.23, which says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not human masters. Amen. So no matter what we do, whether I was teaching math, mm -hmm. or whether I was coaching football, or whether I was cutting grass, or whether I was washing clothes, that I always try to do those the best. Uh, but it starts with that, that faith is your foundation. And I remember we moved to Thomasville, I think on a Friday afternoon. And, uh, and of course, as I'm always going to do, because faith is my foundation, you know, you got to get involved in the local church. Uh, so my wife and I, we went down to First Baptist Church. We went to First Baptist Church. You know, you go there and everybody welcomes you. 
and they, uh, of course, make you fill out that visitor's card and all that kind of stuff, get it all filled out. Well, come Tuesday, either Tuesday night or Thursday night, I get a knock on my door living at Wildwood Apartments. And uh, so we get a knock on that door, and who is it? Brother Milton Gardner <laughs> on John Rainey. And they come and say, hey, well, you were at church Sunday. Well, about time you come join church, right? <laughs> and, uh, and so I said, well, this guy must really be a Yellow Jacket fan. You know, he, here he's come visiting the Yellow Jacket coach. And, well, come to find out, we all know Milton Gardner was not a Yellow Jacket fan. <laughs> so, uh, but he did come. He did come there, and, and sure enough, he said, well, no time like the president. So I think the next Sunday, Rob and I, we joined the church. And, and have been very active in that church to, to this day. You know, it's a, like I said, it is part of my foundation. It's part of what we're supposed to be about. And uh, so, uh, and what we try to always do is, is, is that is our foundation when you get into the school system. Uh, I was part of uh, FCA, which FCA has always been a very important thing in my life. So I always try to be very involved with uh, Coach Wilhelm and I, help with the FCA out there at, at Central. Uh, when uh, Coach Pilcher was the coach, and when I took over the coach, we always took our kids off to FCA camps. Uh, we took our teams to FCA camps. When uh, I became the head coach, I always made it a, a thing, a, a kind of a theme. I would put a, a scripture verse on the on the back of a T-shirt, you know, that was kind of like the theme for our for our team that year, the scripture verse. And uh, of course, we always started off every uh, um, every practice with prayer. And I guess the best thing I can say is. Um, one time, somebody came and took a picture of me leading prayer before practice, and it got, I got in trouble from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and I thought that was great. You know, the, <laughs> you know they're worried about somewhere down in Thomasville we're saying a prayer, and uh, we just kept doing it, though. But, uh, um, but very, very important, and we continue to do that because I know a lot of you don't know. You know, a lot of people think there's you know, animosity between Central and Thomasville and all those ways back. Well, right now, we, uh, we, we have a Bible study um, that a group of Old Central coaches, old Thomasville coaches, Coach Bubba and myself, Coach Harper, Coach Green, all those old Central coaches, old Thomasville coaches. We've got a few, few that are still uh, Coach Delay's able to come sometimes. And we have a Bible study every Tuesday morning. And who would ever thought those guys that locked horns way back then and all those heated battles uh, were in there in a the Bible study just every Tuesday morning. And just, uh, it's the highlight of my week. But uh, faith has to be that foundation. Well, second is family. Uh, when you think about family, there's kind of three parts to a family when you're a coach. One is your immediate family. Okay, in my immediate family, I grew up with my dad's a coach. And my dad is here, he's 90 years old, and he's my hero. Uh, I grew up riding in his equipment truck to the ball games. You know, that's what, you know, they put the equipment in the back of the truck, in the pickup truck, and you go to the games, I'm riding in the back of it. Now, we never let your kids do that today. But I'm riding in the back of that equipment truck. And I always knew I wanted to be a football coach. And I wanted to be just like my dad. And, and my dad was, uh, he was my RA leader. Uh, he, was my biggest, he was my biggest supporter. Uh, and I just wanted to be just like him. Uh, and then as I transition on there, and I get to take my very first coaching job. So I graduate from Presbyterian College. I go, and I go to uh, graduate school at Georgia Southwestern. And... The Lord knew where to put me there at Georgia Southwestern because that, at that place is where I met my beautiful bride, Robin. And, and she is my best friend. And she is my biggest cheerleader. And no matter where I said we were going to go, she said, I'll do that. Because let me tell you what happened the first time. We got married. Uh, we went on our honeymoon. We got back from honeymoon. And one day later, we moved to Presbyterian College. She had never been to South Carolina, I don't think, a day in her life. So we get to Presbyterian College on a Saturday afternoon, and we get everything unloaded, and I tell her, oh, by the way, I've got to be at a quarterback receiver camp tomorrow morning. Uh, and so I leave. I, I mean, I move her to Clinton, South Carolina, uh, and then leave her and go off to a football camp for a whole week. Uh, but before I got back, she already knew half the town. You know, so, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but she, is, uh, she has been my, like I said, my biggest supporter, my biggest cheerleader, and, and I couldn't have done anything without her, and, it's, and I thank her so much. And then we go in into our children, and I have my, both my kids here. My son, Kyle, when you think about uh, Kyle, I, he started off, he was a ball boy. And probably a lot of you might remember the, some of his ball boy uh, tactics is that uh, I think we were having homecoming one time, and uh, it was a rainy game, and you know what happens in rainy games? The field gets messed up. 
Well, we told the ball boys, you know, go out there and push the divots down. So here comes the homecoming queen and all that, and they're, all, they're, they're walking them down there, and there's Kyle and Doug Pilcher, and they're out there pushing the divots down right in front of the homecoming queen. <laughs> so, uh, so he started off as my ball boy, and then I got a chance to coach him, uh, not only in all the Y sports. I, mean, I guess the worst we ever did, Kyle, was I tried to coach him in basketball. You know, so we, we weren't very good in basketball. But <laughs> I coached him in basketball, coached him in baseball here right at the Y, and then uh, I coached him in baseball and in football. And, of course, the football was a little bit tough because um, he played on defense and I coached offense. So when we came home at night to the supper table, there was a lot of times there was – there was a little tension between the two, you know, because uh, who, who won the practice that day? So, uh, so it, was a, it was great. And then Kyle goes off to college. He comes back, uh, and he, as he grows into the adult that he is now, he becomes my booster club president. You know, so it goes from, you know, from all the way we're being the ball boy to being the, the booster club president for us. And then my daughter Kaylee, who was a, the best athlete of all of us, and uh, she was uh, – uh, the apple of her, da her daddy's eye, as they say. Um, she played soccer, so I couldn't really coach her in soccer because I never understood the offsides rule <laughs> because that's just way far in football that you're not supposed to get behind somebody on defense before they can get there. So uh, I never did understand that, but I did drive her bus all the time. Every one of her, every one of her games that she played in high school, I was her bus driver. And uh, so uh, – it's very special to be able to do that. I know a lot of times they say as a coach, you know, you, you, you stay away from your family, but I tried to make sure that, that I, I, that I uh, uh, kept my family involved with it. She was also the greatest ball girl we ever had at Central too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and now I've got my grandchildren, okay? I've got two, my two grandboys right here, Pierce and Wyatt, and uh, they, they love being out at Central football. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Wyatt was, uh, was with me all day Tuesday and uh, it was always GP, that's what he called me. GP, what can I do? GP, what can I do? Well, he'd already been with me for about three hours. Well, his daddy came to pick him up. Well, he had to take me away, kicking and screaming and crying. He said, I've got to help GP do the wash. <laughs> and so, but he didn't get to finish doing the wash there. And of course, I have my granddaughter, uh, Palmer Kate. And so, family, immediate family. But then what's the other second one? The second one's the coaching family. Okay, because when you're, when you're a coach, you, you have a family that you spend so much time with. And I've got my, my old Central family sitting back here together. Papa D, Coach Harper, uh, Coach Green. And then I've got my new Central family over here that, that I'm with. And there's nothing like the camaraderie that you have with your family, your coaching family. Because you've got, you, you got the amount of time that you spend together and then the amount of time that those wives spend together and how close you become because you have this common thread that you, that you share. And so that's your second family. And then your third family are the players because what they are, they're your extra children. And like Joe, like Joe talked about, I can remember Joe when he went off to, to Georgia Tech. I had, I had uh, not only coached Joe, I also taught Joe in math. So he goes off to Georgia Tech. Of course, you know at Georgia Tech, math's gonna be really tough, right? So I'm, I'm at home one time, got home from practice. I get a call from Joe, and Joe says, Coach, I need some help with this math. I went, Joe, how do we do math over the phone? Coach, I don't know. You just got to help me. So we're trying to do math over the phone. I go, Joe, don't you have any tutors at Georgia Tech? Yeah, but they just don't explain it like you do, Coach. <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, you know, they're, they're your other family. You know, they're those, those kids that you, you know, enjoy see growing up. And, you know, and I got to see, you know, two years ago, Joe get inducted right here in this, into this Hall of Fame. So family. And then third is football. And, of course, football in, in Thomasville is great. I mean, I can, uh, I can remember almost 30 years ago, standing out there in that parking lot, right out here in this Thomasville parking lot, I came to interview for a job with Coach Pilcher. But I'm standing out there talking to Coach Bobo because both Coach Bobo and I had been, had been friends for a long time through quarterback receiver camps. And I told him that I'd come for an interview with Coach Pilcher. And you know what Coach Bobo told me? You need to take that job. All right? You need to take that job. And thank you for that advice, Coach Bobo, because 30 years later, we, we, we call Thomasville home. And, um, but it's also, football is also a great game because it teaches kids about life. Yeah. Okay? It's the greatest game to teach kids about life because it's tough. It's tough to play football. All right? it, you think about it. You practice 
about 95% of the time, and you play games about five. You spend a lot of time in preparation for a little bit of time of playing. You also have to go through a lot of adversity. I mean, it's tough when you get out there on, on uh, summer afternoons and summer mornings and you're sweating and, and your buddies are over there at the swimming pool, right? and you have to fight through, the, fight through some tough times. But it's also good because football requires all different kinds of people. Jaden Rubo is a great example. Our inductee. When, we, when I first got here to Central with Coach Rogers and we talked about all the players, I don't, Rubo, I don't think I ever heard your name mentioned. He wasn't a guy that they even, anybody even talked much about when we first got here. And here he is, is going in, in his senior year, he's our male athlete of the year. Wow. Huh? Because of hard work, because of dedication, every single person can find a place to make a contribution on a football team. It takes big guys, it takes little guys, it takes fast guys. Uh, you just have to find your place. Now, that place may be the star quarterback. That place may be the scout team player that you, that, that you play your whole career, which I did at Presbyterian College. Uh, but when they had to go hire a coach at Presbyterian College, I was the first guy they called. Uh, it takes all kinds of people, and I think that's, that's what life is about. And it also makes people um, be part of something that is greater than themselves. Okay, and you've talked about this day and time about, about kids. When kids learn that there is something greater than themselves and, and they, they learn that and they learn through all the things of football, then they're going to be successful in life. And so I think if, you, if we all go by those faith, family, and in football or whatever your football may be, okay, you try to do all those right, but if you have faith as that foundation, then, then you can be successful. And I want to uh, thank you for your time tonight. Again, thank you for this honor. And uh, have a blessed evening. And uh, go Jackets, Coach Rogers. <laughs> well done, dude. Our final inductee tonight is Mr. Shedrick Wilson. Shed was a standout wide receiver for the Bulldogs, a prolific pass catcher who could run down anything that was close by. He had the record for the most receptions in a 10-game season with 51, 51 catches and a 13-game season with 66 catches. He was selected and played in the Georgia-Florida All-State game his senior year. He was named All-Region wide receiver and All-Region punter. She had also led it on the baseball team as a first baseman and a pitcher. His quickness and all-around skills made him an asset on the basketball court. But his sport of choice and where he excelled was football. After graduation, Shedrick received a scholarship to play football at Louisiana State University, where he continued to excel as a wide receiver. He was one of only two freshmen to start for LSU their freshman year. He was recognized by the USA Today as one of the fabulous freshmen and best of the rest. He played in every game from his freshman year to his senior year, 44 games. He was the first player to win the Charles McClendon Award given to not only an outstanding football player, but an exceptional person and a true leader as well. At six foot two, 200 pounds, Sheridan was just the right size to be a great target for quarterbacks. He finished his, his LSU career with over 1,500 receiving yards, and after graduation in 1995, he was selected by the Houston Oilers in the National Football League draft. He played for the Oilers, then he played for the Philadelphia Eagles where he suffered a spinal injury that caused him to be released. Not through yet. He signed on to play for the Barcelona Dragons of the World Football League. Shed has served in many other capacities as a member of the Men Against Violence organization, member of the Big Brothers mentoring organization, 
and the Boys and Girls Club. One special distinction that I should mention about Shedrick. He was selected by his teammates as a team captain while he was in high school. He was selected by his teammates as the only captain his senior year at LSU. He was selected by his teammates as captain for the Barcelona Dragons, making him not only an outstanding athlete, but a player well liked and respected by his teammates in high school, college, and the pros. Ladies and gentlemen, our next inductee is Shedrick Wilson. I'm great, this is awesome, have a good night. <laughs> I, I do understand and I'm very uh, aware of the fact that we have been here for a long time. I think I might be the only 50-year-old father chasing a two-year-old through the building. Right? So, <laughs> when I ask that you bear with me, I, I, I ask that you do it with a little bit of sympathy in your hearts. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the committee tonight uh, with, with uh, being selected and inducted into the Thomasville Thomas County Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank um, Mr. Bill Rainey uh, for all of his hard work and dedication to this community. My good friend, old teammate, Tom Everett, for the work that he does in this great community. Ex officio as well, and Mr. Stan Fivish uh, from the Board of Governors for putting on a wonderful banquet with great food tonight. Thank you guys for everything that you do. I stand here tonight as a product of a community, a great community. And one of the things that I've always learned is that when you have success, you always divert the attention away from yourself and give it to the people that assisted you. Being inducted into this Hall of Fame tonight, I can see no other reason but to continue along that path. So what I want to do tonight is a little something different to acknowledge the people that have allowed me to be here before you tonight. I'm going to even be as selfish enough to ask that when I mention the names of all these great people. And it's going to take a while, I'm sorry. Um, I would ask that you stand, because this is not about me. This is about each and every one of you that have assisted me to be here tonight. Before I ask the people to stand, I will say that I stand here as a proud grandson of Dean Lewis and Beulah Lewis, as well as Blue Wilson and Claritha Wilson. I stand here as a proud nephew of Valoria Hall, who's passed away, along with my uncle Tony Hill, who's also uh, not here with us tonight. I know that they're all smiling down on me tonight from heaven and proud of, hopefully proud of, what I've accomplished uh, in my life with hopefully more to accomplish. I'll begin with a uh, few people that uh, I'll switch uh, sides of the, uh, the street and ask to uh, honor some people from that other high school, the blue and gold people. Um, <laughs> being a true dog, you will never hear me say their names. <laughs> I only hope that they travel safe and make it home safely. If and when they win, it is quite painful. <laughs> I'll start with uh, Coach Connor and Mrs. Connor. Please stand. Yeah, Mrs. Connor, I did it to you again. You don't have to stand as beautiful as you are. Thank you guys for being great leaders in my community, raising me along with your son, Ken, and treating me like a son. Mrs. Connor, your bologna sandwiches went a long way to help me become the man that I am. Coach Ward and Mrs. Ward. Coach, if I looked half as good as you, I would have been a model. Not just in the Hall of Fame. But a great man. Coach and Mrs. Ward, I lived in the same neighborhood as they did. They allowed me to play with their great son, Charlie Ward, who is by far the greatest athlete and one of the best people I've ever had the fortune to be around. Thank you guys for allowing me to play in your yard, chasing me home on those long nights. And Mrs. Ward, thank you for everything that you've ever done. Mrs. Armster. Education, first thing I think about when I see you. Second thing I think about, those great, ground, those great brownies you used to bake after football games for me here in Thomasville and to send me back to Baton Rouge. Thank you, more importantly, for 
given me four beautiful sisters and all four of your daughters who are very educated and special ladies. Thank you, I love you for everything that you've ever done for me. Coach and Mrs. Christie, the Jay-Z and Beyonce of Thomasville. <laughs> I can't say enough about what the two of you did uh, for me, not just uh, being uh, teachers, both for me and a coach, but also uh, the Sunday schools that uh, I spent with you guys in New Jerusalem Baptist Church, instilling in me faith, foundation, and, and the love of Christ. So thank you, Coach, for everything that you've ever done. Thank you, Mrs. Christie. Yeah. To my family, my beautiful aunts, Aunt Deborah, Aunt Barbara, Aunt Phyllis, thank you, ladies, for supporting mom and dad to help me be able to stand here tonight. Aunt Deborah, if I had a dollar for all the gas money that I burned out of your car, <laughs> I'd be a rich man. Aunt Barbara, you're the most kind soul that I've ever met in my entire life. Aunt Phyllis, you're one of the toughest ladies that I've ever met. I, know, I want you guys to know, I want you ladies to know that I love you and it is because of you that I'm here tonight. To my cousins, my family, Labrina, Lisa, Dr. Sharonda, you ladies don't know how to stand, use those legs. <laughs> Let's go, this is about us tonight. You, if you didn't want to stand, you should not have contributed. <laughs> Shay, Sean, Sylvia, Rhonda, Sonda, and my sister Jocelyn. You ladies have no idea the man that you helped me become. I can always see things through a feminine perspective and still be as masculine as I am. Understanding that if anyone ever did anything to any of you ladies, I'd be willing to risk my life and die for you. Thank you ladies for being the kind, beautiful souls that you are and assisting me with standing here tonight. Special prayer, and I ask that the community continue to pray for my cousin Kiva. We lost a dear family member of ours this year. And her strength through what Kiva's had to deal with and being the mother of DJ Thurman has taught me a lesson that I thought that I never would learn and one that no parent should ever have to learn. Kiva, you have an entire community standing behind you. We love you and we'll always be here for you. Mrs. Bobo. Yes, ma'am. First teacher that I ever had that would allow everyone in the school to know who her favorite student was. And she will still tell you to this day that I am still her favorite student. DJ, don't take it. I know a lot of people here that she has taught. Please don't take it personal. I am pretty special, which is why I'm saying. <laughs> Coach Bobo. He taught me to never quit. <laughs> he told me that the game of life was just like football. I was asked to keep this to five minutes. I could spend two hours talking about you and the man that you made me be. I'll keep it short and brief, and thank you most of all for not just football, but for teaching me the game of life through football. You have no idea the number of people outside of Thomasville that know you but absolutely hate you. <laughs> because no other coach, and I, and I said that as a joke, but no other coach or person in my life could have prepared me to walk away from Thomasville High School and go into a D1 college and take the starting job of an all SEC receiver as a true freshman. The reason that happened is because on those 90 degree days when you wouldn't let me drink water, <laughs> and I wanted to call Mrs. Bobo and tell her how bad you would treat me. <laughs> Nothing in my life has ever been that difficult. And I stand here as the father of a 27-year-old autistic son who's never spoken a word. 
I sometimes fall back on your, your teaching and your guidance to be a great father, great husband, and a great friend because you've always taught me to never give up. Thank you, Coach. Duan. Yeah. Make sure you send this to everybody in New Jersey at the Citadel Lounge. 99.9% .9 of the things that I've accomplished in my life, I did it trying to be a better person than you. You were and are not just a great brother, but a great friend. I envy everything about you. I love you. I respect you. And thank you for always being there for me. Even when the kids from Central chased me out of a party one night and you had to come home and find out who it was to make sure that I could go to the game that next weekend. Thank you, Duane. <laughs> Gigi. You're a rock. Mama, we made it. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've ever done. Thank you for giving birth to me, giving me life, and continuing to keep me breathing and teaching me uh, strength through struggle. And the best thing I think you ever taught me was to bend my knees and pray when things got difficult. Again, like coach, I could spend hours talking about your contributions, the woman that you are, and the person that you are. I love you dearly, and thank you for helping me be here tonight. To Pops and Jackie, who can't be here, to call you guys step parents would be disrespectful. The love that you share and have for my mother and Jackie, my father, unfortunately, she's not able to be here. You have no idea how I can sleep at night knowing that you're there for mom and Jackie is there for daddy. Thank you, Pops. I love you. And last but certainly not least, Albert Wilson. You know, I've never given you the credit, Dad, publicly, that you so rightfully deserve. I stand here as a man today to tell you that I'm here and who I am because of you. I spent 99.9% .9 of my time trying to do everything I could to impress you and to be a son that you could be proud of. Your service in the military and to this country were minor compared to your service for me and helping me do everything that I needed to do. No request was returned. Everything that I ever asked of you, you went above and beyond. You taught me to be a man, and I love and appreciate you for that. Thank you, Daddy. And like I said, last but not least, again, to my lovely wife, Nancy, my noisy little beautiful daughter, Sophia, and my son, Devin, who's not here uh, with us tonight. Nancy, thank you for putting up with more stuff than Gloria and Coach, uh, Coach Bobo ever put up with. <laughs> you are a beautiful, kind soul. Thank you for supporting me through everything that you've done. I tell people all the time, unfortunately, I uh, had to live through Hurricane Katrina. And I lost pretty much everything that I had. And um, I found Nancy at the lowest point in my life. She's been with me at my lowest and continues to support me now that I'm at one of my highest moments. I love you. Thank you for being there. Thank you for giving me a beautiful family. And thank you for being the wife that you are. Thank you. Amen. To all my former teachers that I may not have mentioned, coaches, more importantly, teammates, and friends, thank you all for the support that you gave me for pushing a young man from Thomasville, Georgia, through Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and finally living uh, in, inside of the big city of New York. This community is extremely special to me. This community is extremely special to the world. And I am proud everywhere that I go to tell people that I'm from Thomasville. Good luck to the dogs. Central, get home safe. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have one final round of applause for our class of 2024 inductees?